God be blessed and all of his people. And everybody said, amen. God bless all of you. Glad to see you. Praise God for your presence here on today. Without you, hello, there will be no combined classes. So just know that, yes, I am extremely very, very, very happy that you're all here and present on today. And I pray that I will be able to give you a word that will help you in your everyday Christian living and or you'll learn something that you didn't already know and or I'll remind you of something that you already knew. God bless all of you. We got a challenging lesson on today. This is the seventh sign that Jesus was pr given proof that he was indeed the Messiah. This is the seventh sign. And there are seven signs all total in the book of John that lets us know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. And this is uh, sign number seven. Seven. And I'm going to just briefly tell you one, two, three, four, five, and six so you'll know them. And hopefully I'll get a chance to mention them again uh, as the lesson progresses. The first one was turning water to wine. That was in John chapter 2. The second one was healing of the nobleman's son. And that is in John chapter 4, starting at verse 46. The third sign that he gave was the healing of the man at the pool. That's in John chapter 5. And the next sign, the fourth was feeding of the 5,000. Amen, John chapter 6. Walking on the water, and that's Jesus himself walking on the water. That's in John chapter 6, starting at verse 16. And then healing of the blind man, which was in chapter 9 of the book of John. And then, of course, the greatest miracle of all, raising Lazarus from the dead, giving life back to the dead. And that was not for Jesus, nor God the Father. It was for us to let us know that Jesus, as well as God the Father, has the power to resurrect us from the dead. And at some point in time, futuristic, we're going to need to be resurrected from the dead. Amen? Amen. Having said that, let us look to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to move forward to this very, very exciting, very, very challenging lesson on the day. Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise you. We adore you. You are good, and your mercy endureth forever. And we pray thee right now. Open our hearts and our minds that we might be receptive, that we will believe in our heart with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul, that Jesus indeed was the Messiah that was come. He is God himself. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, our lesson text title that we have today is what? The raising of Lazarus. This was the miracle that Jesus did and got himself killed. Hello. Hello. I'm looking at it from a humanistic standpoint of view. They could kill Jesus. Understand that. They attempted to do it on our lesson we had last time. And it said that Jesus passed right through the midst of them. He did a miraculous miracle. But I'm saying this. Number one, they wanted to kill the person who was the giver of life. Think about that. Think about it. They wanted to kill the person. The only way that we can be resurrected and give eternal life is through Jesus Christ the Son and or God the Father. Hello. That's the only way you can get resurrected from the dead. And if you're living and moving now and you're listening to this video, 
You got an appointed date with death. Hello, but God promised you he'll resurrect you from the dead. He proved it in this lesson. Hello. Now, here we are here. Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, and that means he was deeply moved. And just prior to this, they had said, and Jesus wept. That's uh, uh, several verses before this start. And Jesus was not weeping for uh, himself. He was weeping for the people as well as what? In this particular one, being deeply moved because all of the evil and the tragedy that has been brought on mankind through Satan and his unclean spirits, they are the ones that came in. What did Satan and his unclean spirits ride in on? The death. That was their entrance into the world. When Cain slew what? Abel, first generation. That's how sin entered in. And we, we know it entered in also at the fall with Adam and Eve. But the first murder that took place, Cain and Abel, and that's where the devil rolled in on sin. And he's been bringing tragedy, tragedies and evil, death, and please remember this, the last uh, opponent that we have to face is what? Death. Jesus defeats him right here. Amen. Now, here he is. Again, he groaned within himself over the tragedies that have been brought on mankind through sin. And the text also reveals that Jesus was angry in his spirit. Some of them don't say that as we read them, but it means he was angry in his uh, spirit about what? The sin and the effect that it has on mankind. Lazarus, family, Mary and Martha, torn in grief and sorrow. All because of what? All because of sin. And it proceeds on from here. Look at verse 39. Jesus said what? Take ye away the stone. Now, they were at my, uh, excuse me, Lazarus' graveside. Now, look at this. Did Jesus need them to take the stone away? No. He was getting ready to raise man from the dead. He didn't need them. What am I trying to say? God doesn't need any of us. He's self-sufficient. He do anything he wants to. He don't need us. We need him. Hello. Think about this. In the midst of the miraculous, standing in front of God himself, he still made room for human people like you and me to minister in his presence. He didn't have to do that. Thank God that you're alive and well if you have your strength and thank him for every opportunity that you get to glorify God and to serve in his presence. Hello. Amen. <laughs> you don't have to look for to find something to be grateful about. Amen. God made room for them to serve. And what and what? They could not do, he could. They could not raise Lazarus from the dead, but he could. But he let them do the what? Simple thing, take away the stone. Hello, you can do that. You can be a witness for the Lord. You can be a blessing. You can serve the Lord. Hello, and everything you can't do, God can do it. Hello, amen. Opportunities. And then he said, take away the stone here. Mary, the mother, excuse me, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he have been what? Dead for four days. Now, now, if you get a chance, look at verse 5 and 6. At verse 5 and 6, hopefully I'll get a chance to touch on them through this lesson here. But the one thing that we want to understand here, decomposing. The body had began to decompose. Hello. And uh, Mary, knowing this, the 
uh, grave had been what? Totally shut up. This is four days later, not three days later. Now, why do I say three days? Because they believed back in Jesus' day that the spirit hovered around the body for three days. And if you look at verse 5 and 6, Jesus was just right down the road, only a couple miles away, and he told the disciples when they told him that uh, Mary and Martha says uh, their brother Lazarus is sick, come right away. What did Jesus do? Jesus delayed on purpose and stayed there for an additional two days to make sure when he arrived, he would arrive on the fourth day and not what? The third day. Because that way they could not say that the resurrection was a fluke and that it really wasn't Lazarus' body, it was a ghost. Hello. That's why he stayed the additional two days. Read that in verse 5 and 6. It, it tells, tells you right there. And, and then he was dead. The disciples, uh, Jesus told them they were sleeping. He would sleep. And the disciples said, oh, well, that's a normal thing. When he wake up, he'll be okay. And Jesus had to explain to him, no, no, he's dead. Hello. And then Jesus was going to raise him from the dead. Amen. So please, understand. and if you get a chance, read this entire chapter. The entire 11th chapter, it'll do you good. Amen. It'll be a blessing to you. But now, hear it again here. Uh, Mary may have been thinking about defilement, handling a dead body. Uh, we don't know. She was a little hesitant right now. Whether she was thinking about defilement or whatever after four days. Um, nevertheless, it moves on. After four days, uh, de decomposing would take its toll. And then in verse 40, look, look what verse 40 says. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou wouldest see the glory of God. Now, in 22, 23, and 24, and I, I just want to touch on those just, just a little bit so we can get a clear view of the setting. Uh, 22, 23, and 24. Look at this conversation that goes on. Let's, let's start at 21. 21, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only thou had been here, my brother would not have died. And that is correct. Jesus would have healed him. But Jesus did not want to heal him. Jesus wanted to resurrect him. It continues on. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Look, Jesus already knew what he was going to do. And not only did Jesus know, God the Father knew. This was planned in God's plan to help us. Not Jesus, not God the Father. He was going to blister the faith of Mary and Martha, the disciples, those that believe, uh, even some of the Pharisees, as well as what? Many of the other people. When God does a great miracle, there's always mixed emotion. Some people are sad. Some are encouraged. Some are blessed. And some are happy. And then there's another group that wanted to kill him. That's why I said this was the miracle that got Jesus killed. Assuming that God the Father went along with it. And he did. But before his hour came, nobody could touch him. Nobody. They tried to kill him. They couldn't. But when his hour came, then the Lord allowed it. 
Nobody took Jesus' life. He gave his life away for you and for me. Horrible price that he had to pay, but it just showed how much he loved each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. But now, and verse, and he just told her, your brother will rise again. Verse 24, yes, Martha say, I, he will rise when everyone else rises on the last day. <laughs> she, she didn't know Jesus was ready to do it right then. Hello, but I want you to see humanistic thinking. Last verse, Jesus told her, I am the what? I am the resurrection. I control life and death. And I'm not only that, I am the life. There's life in me. And God has allowed me to give it to whomsoever I will. Amen. And we're going to read that in chapter 5, verse 25. And if you have the ability to go check it out now, you'll be a little bit ahead of the game. John chapter 5, verse, five, verse 25. Okay. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who, who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? And of course, in the next verse, she said, yeah. Yeah. But look. Her faith begins to falter now that she's at the grave. And Jesus said he had to encourage her and remind her of what he said to her in verse 21, 22, 23, 24. Now, we're all the way down to about most verse 40 now. And he had to go back and remind her, hold it. Did you say that the Lord would give me anything I want? What happened to your faith? She said, oh, Lord, don't, don't, don't move the stone. <laughs> don't he stink it now. She did not believe that Jesus could raise him from the dead. And sometimes we trust God for the small thing in life. But we don't really trust him for the big things in life. We get just like Martha, our faith starts to falter, and our faith starts to what? Get weak. But look, what did Jesus admonish her to do? It says it right in the verse. It says right in the verse. It says here, say I not unto thee, verse 40, that if thou wouldest do what? Believe. That's the key. That's faith. He said, if I told you, don't you, did you forget what we talked about in verse 22 and 23. Did you forget it? He says, keep on believing. I don't know what you are. I don't know what you're going through. But I can tell you what the answer is. Yes, it might be tough. But keep on believing. That's the key. Keep on believing. It might not come today. It might not come next week, next month, or the next several years. But guess what? Resurrection Day is coming for you just like it did for Lazarus. God is always on time. If you'd ask Mary and Martha, was Jesus always on time? Hello. They might would have told you, oh, no, we, we tried to get him a few days ago. Two days and went by. We ain't heard nothing from him. Hello. As a matter of fact, this is the fourth day. And there, all the chances go. They done sealed up the tomb. It's too late now. Never too late for Jesus. Never too late. For, they're always on time. You may not understand it, but he's always on time. He won't leave you hanging. That's what he was trying to convince Martha of. Just keep on believing. Keep on believing. Keep on believing, and you will see the glory of God. 
And that's not me telling you that. That's God telling you that. And like I said, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you've been through. Hello. But keep on believing. Keep right on believing and you will see the glory of God. God promises that. I didn't promise that. Pastor didn't promise that. God promised that. Hello. Don't forget it. And it's easy to get amnesia when you get in trouble. Verse 41. Then they took away the stone. Now, now, what was that all about? She's getting her faith faltering and everything. Now she tells them, then they took away the stone. Jesus had to get permission from the family in order to open the grave. <laughs> I know that sounds ironic. <laughs> Jesus, the giver of all of life, had to get permission to open it. That's what it was. Between verse 40 and 41, it says they didn't open that grave until what? Mary or Martha of the family said, okay, it's all right. Jesus had to encourage her first. He had to, had to talk her into it, but, but he did, and she opened it or allowed him or gave him permission. Now, now, then they took away the stone. And what do we say about that? Even in standing in the presence of Almighty God, he's always given us a chance. Humans giving us room to minister, and whatever we can't do, he's willing to do it. Don't forget that part. That's why I said it twice. Then they took away the stone. And the idea of it is here, resurrection is coming to you if you just keep on keeping the faith. Latter part of verse 41, the uh, place where the dead was lain. Talking about Lazarus, Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. He didn't pray no petition. Lord, will you pray, raise? Life? They already knew what they were going to do. God the Father, God the Son, total togetherness, unified. They knew what was going to happen on the fourth day. And Jesus just said, Father, I thank you that you heard my prayer. Now, how many times do we forget to tell God, Lord, I thank you. And if Jesus, who was God, if he took time out to say, thank you, Father, certainly we ought to do it. If anybody ought to do it, we who confess or uh, profess his name, we ought to be full of praise and thanksgiving to God for all the things that we, he's done for us, both knowing and unknowingly. Many times God is in our favor and blessing us and keeping us. We don't even know about it. Hello. Hello. We can be riding down the highway. In a few seconds, we could be a pile of junk on the highway somewhere. And God averts a horrible accident and allows our moments to keep on rolling on. And we don't even know anything about it. I've witnessed that my own self. I went to sleep driving. Hello. Could have been dead sleeping in my grave. And the Lord woke me up. Hello. I could have killed myself and a lot of other people. More than one time. Hello. The Lord is good. Don't forget to praise him. Don't forget to give him the thanksgiving. They were unified. They knew what was going to happen. God the Father knew it as well as the Son, and look what he does. He praises God, he thanks God, and he says in verse 42, and I knew that thou hearest me always. Total unification here. He says, Lord, you didn't just hear me this time. You hear me what? All the time. And Jesus explained why he said, normally he wouldn't have said anything. He said, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, and it's not in there, but that means I said it out loud. That was for their benefit, 
not my benefit, for their benefit. And he says it. He doesn't leave it, leave it up to us to uh, try to guess what he meant. Look what he says. I said it, meaning out loud, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. He was talking about the people. He said, I did it so they would hear me talking to you as my father, and then they would believe that what? You sent me. Jesus was witnessing that everybody that could hear him as well as everybody that could see him. And we ought to want to do the same identical thing. Do something, say something for somebody else's benefit. Hello? And not always for what? Self. Amen. Amen. Come on now. I didn't say that was easy. I know we like to put self in the front. On the front line, yes, yeah, always about me. But look, let your witness be about somebody else sometime. The focal point here was God the Father. It says here, he says, I know that thou, meaning God the Father, heareth me. Jesus was pointing to God the Father. Amen. Because he always hears him. And the insinuation, he answers my prayers as well. Whatever I ask for, they're always on the same page. And the Lord grants it. Why? Because he is God. They're one and the same. Whatever Jesus said, if God was there, he said the same thing. Carbon copies of each other. Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And look at here. Raising Lazarus was from the dead was the what? Now, I know you know it now. You might not have known it when the lesson started, but this was the seventh sign that Jesus was the Messiah that should come. It was a confirmation. And we talked about miracles one, two, three, four, five, six. All of them happened in John from chapter two all the way down to verse 11, excuse me, chapter 11, where we are now. He did these seven signs. This is the one they got him killed. Hello. They plotted to start killing him as soon as he raised Lazarus from the dead. Verse 53 and verse 57. I'm not going to read them. You can look at them yourself. They plotted. They came together for a meeting in verse 53. And verse 57, they said, if anybody... See Jesus around here. You better come and tell us and let us know so we can arrest him. They plotted to kill him. What was their motivation? If you look at the other verses, 24, 25, right in there, they were concerned about their jobs and positions and titles. If we let him go on like this, Everybody is going to believe on him. And they decided at that point, they began to plot his death. Now, I told you before, they couldn't do anything to Jesus. And Jesus knew it until God said so, until his hour would come. Now, I said, this is a miracle uh, that he did that got him killed, take that with a grain of salt because he could still be hanging out there on that cross right now and still wouldn't be dead. They didn't take his life. He surrendered his life. Don't forget that. Amen. Now, 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 we're going in here to the last verse here and look what it says here. And when they had thus spoken, he cried with a what? With a loud voice, come forth. Now, if you've been listening at any preachers any time at all, they will always tell you, if he wouldn't have called Lazarus' name, all the people in the grave 
would have got up and walked around. But he specified Lazarus' name so that all the other graves would be emptied. Amen. And the Bible tells us in no uncertain terms, everybody at some point in time will hear the voice of God saying, get up. It's time to go home. First Thessalonians, it said, with the shout of the trump and the archangel, what? The dead in Christ shall do what? Rise. And then we who are yet alive will be what? Caught up with them in the air. Now, 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 let me just parenthetically drop in here. Uh, that last part about we who are yet alive will be caught up together with him in the air. Now, if I was you, I wouldn't pray for that. <laughs> Those people them will be people to who have went through the great tribulation. And if you've read anything in the book of Revelation about the great tribulation, you don't want to go there if you don't have to. And you pray God, you get out here on the rapture. Hello. Because those last three and a half years, you're going to have to have a mark of the beast in your forehead or in your forehand hand somewhere. You're not going to be to buy, sell, or trade, or do nothing. And then on top of that, if they find out you don't have a mark of the beast, they're going to do their best to kill you. Hello. Hello. You don't, you don't want to be in that group if you could have it. But some people are going to get saved during the first three and a half years, and then with the last three and a half, they go, uh, all that didn't get saved, some are going to get saved in the, the last three and a half years, and uh, they're going to have to go through the tribulations. Hello? Hello? I just parenthetically dropped in there to let you see that one. All right, here it is, last part. And he that was dead came forth, bound, hand and foot, with what? Grave clothes on. Now, the grave clothes were what? linen strips of cloth and they would wrap the body and it wasn't tight like the Egyptians did the mummies and the head was totally separate uh, and they did put uh, spices and aroma it didn't take away the de decomposing but it did help it did help but after four days uh, decomposing uh, just took over Hello. But just be reminded, he came forth head and head as well, separate, but they had a separate cloth on that. So he could move what? A little bit. That's how he got out of the tomb when Jesus said, come forth. Look what happened. His face was bound about with a napkin. That's because they were not, what, connected together where he could not move at all. He come out, Jesus said unto him, loose him and let him go. Now, the loosing, at least one thing we know for sure. Why did they want him loose? So he could what? Move freely. And that way they could not say it was a what? Could not say it was a ghost. Hello. Hello. That's at least one reason why. And then... Uh, uh, they could see and give evidence that he was alive and that he was not a ghost. Please be remindful of that. And the thing of it is here, John chapter 5 and 25, please keep that verse in mind and read it at your leisure. I don't have time to read it today. Amen. Our time is running short. I would look it up and read it, but I know I'm going to give you that for homework as well as what? Read the entire 11th chapter of the book of John. We all are going to want to be resurrected at some point in time, even though it's futuristic. We're going to need the power of God to what? Raise us from the dead. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Amen. God bless all of you. Thank you for your presence. Please, please keep, uh, please keep, uh, 
excuse me, the, uh, please keep uh, the Sunday school uh, combined class in mind and keep in mind what we talked about here uh, at the um, seventh sign that, last, that, that, excuse me, that Jesus was confirmed as the Messiah and God himself. Let us look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we love you, we praise you, we adore you. You are good, your ways are past finding out. And as high as the heavens is upon the earth, higher your ways and your thoughts than our ways and our thoughts. And sometimes we want a healing. But Lord, sometimes you want to do something even greater than a healing. You want to do a resurrection to lift our hearts, our minds, to lift our soul and encourage us to believe even more. In Jesus' name, amen.